Panasonic Business Partner 170, and this is its motherboard here. But today, what I'm working on is I've discovered that this hard drive has literally started leaking. I've already cleaned up some of it, but you can still see the residue on this piece here. Um, and what's shocking is the uh, material that is used to hold this drive together down the sides there has liquefied. You can definitely see it right there and you can actually see inside the drive you should never ever ever be able to see inside a hard drive that is extremely bad and that means that dust particles and whatever else can get in there i have heard rumor that you can basically seal these back up again and uh, they may work so i am going to definitely have to give that a shot but first i'm going to have to clean off all that goo and then i'm going to have to check out this floppy drive because these things are famous for belts so I just wanted to point out that um, I've taken these screws out here. Uh, there's actually one over there and one over there, just two. And then what you'll notice is that it's held on, uh, or at least it's still attached by these cables. So these cables come out very carefully. Um, you can use a spudger or you know, just kind of get a screwdriver in there. Just don't pry too hard because obviously these are data cables. Uh, and then there's one on this side, and this is probably the easiest one of them all to do um, because it sticks out the way it does. Uh, you can just give this a tug with your finger and just pull that out. And then uh, the, you don't have to disconnect these other ones because uh, basically you've got enough room to work. Uh, this will just kind of fold back. And now we can see the infamous problem that uh, the Tandy version has the same issue. Um, is that they run these things on a little rubber belt, which you can see down there. It's clearly not turning when I turn this. It's just broken, I think. Uh, maybe I'll also take a step back to say that one of the things I've been doing is when I take the screws off, which these are the two ones that held on the floppy, and it was also lightly sticky attached to this membrane that sits on the bottom of the motherboard, um, is I just put this back, these screws here, back into... Where they go so i won't forget that they go there and then the four floppy screws i've stuck where the floppy thing is um where the floppy used to be sorry and these two back plate pieces i've put here as well so again i remember that those are floppy and for the rest of the project what i've done since i've had to do this over several days um because of time constraints is i've just labeled baggies that say you know this screw that screw so that i don't forget where i'm at in this you know in this project of taking this thing apart so i highly recommend that if you're going to do a project like this that you you know take the time to say you know these are the panasonic screen hinges and these are the you know uh um under the battery bios cover or you know these are the panasonic external screws meaning the ones that go into the outside case or outer case so that you don't forget where you're going to be when you need to finish it up and do it strong and not have any extra parts left over which is never a good thing funny that this is actually basically the same thing as a full-size floppy just smaller these rails um, obviously just slide underneath those two pieces to keep the drive head up um, and this mechanism is actually just very loosely held in here um, all you have to do is just kind of this piece uh, you just simply Pull this piece to the side slightly and then lift up and then the whole thing comes loose and what holds this thing down is this spring-loaded piece here it's just a literally a flimsy piece of metal um, and it goes into one hole on one side and then the other hole on the other side and all that holds that together is this being bent in the right spot 
to hold down, it goes the other way obviously, to hold down pressure on this top plate acting as a spring as the floppy comes in. Now here we can see this is clearly the uh, the pulley here that this is supposed to ride on um, and it obviously goes to this giant drive motor because you can see that's no longer doing its job. So what we're going to do is put a belt in there and loop it back around there with enough tension to spin this. Bet you weren't expecting it, but more screws. So one over there and one over there, and that allows us to take this pulley right off. And here is where we're going to discover that, and I just enhance my zoom here, that uh, that's what's left of the drive belt sitting on that brass pulley you almost can't see a clean side of that brass pulley there but you can see there's little chunks of that belt everywhere even inside the motor we're gonna have to clean all of that out before we put another belt on there so the belt obviously goes around this pulley i'm holding here and this is actually just a directional pulley it's basically designed to align the belt it's supposed to come down here around this black piece back around this directional pulley and then back up here again so it actually does spin the floppy and without that it's not going to spin that floppy so we need to get this uh, pulley all cleaned up uh, of all of its gunk and then I'm going to put another belt on there one of the things I wanted to point out before I put this thing back together is that I took the time to meticulously polish that piece because when I put a new belt on there um, it's going to ride on that surface and if that surface has any sort of corrosion or you know any sort of abrasive to it it's going to just chew up the next belt so clean that up the other thing is obviously i went around the motor made sure that we have no grime sitting inside there i did scratch it up a little bit but oh well it's brass it scratches easy this piece is basically the least accessible pulley and so if this was attached, you know, if it was already installed, it'd be the hardest one to get on, right? So, so we'll route it around there first, um, install with it routed, basically just put that belt on there, hold it with your finger as best you can and put it and then set this down. I would recommend getting those screws in because that'll hold everything in place. Then go around the outer edge first and then the loop back here last because that's the last point of tension. Now we've got that in there and what I do with these once you've got a belt in is you just give it a spin and you just keep spinning because what's going to happen is, see, I'll try and zoom in on this, that belt is going to arrive at a engineered uh, seated spot on this wheel and an engineered seated spot on that brass pulley there and basically this is going to sit itself and if you have done something wrong twisted it a section or something like that this is going to pop off so you know you've done your job well when you keep spinning this sucker and uh, actually you have to spin it from the motor but you keep spinning that over and over and over again as much as you like and that never comes off because basically there's no twists there's no kinks everything's just so i put this plate back in already um, but i wanted to show you this because this is kind of an interesting design right so what we're going to do is bend this upward a little bit as we go down and imagine holding the camera and doing this at the same time that takes some skills, man. There we go. And that applies the downward pressure. I also decided while I was in here, I uh, I hate floppy drives that just get stuck, you know? And so I decided to gr grease the release mechanism much as I possibly could here. So I've greased the daylights out of it here. You can see I've, I've packed it in there. And what I've done is I've taken the grease um, and uh, I've packed it underneath with a, a tool like this. And then I've also packed it underneath the spring. Not in the spring, but underneath the spring. Just wherever it travels there. I think it's kind of neat that you can, you know, really go for the distance. and. But if you can really work it, if you can get the spring just so you can shoot the darn thing right out of there, right? And that's what you want. 
that's a that's a solid working floppy right there is when you can just but the other thing you want to check obviously before you go and reassemble the whole buddy thing is that when you spin this let's see if we can get a good angle on that when you spin this you can almost hear that classic floppy sound and you'll see the media spinning as you start the reassembly for these you have to push these in and you can just push on that plastic all you do is just line it up in the hole and then push with your with your thumb into it and it just slides right back in there don't forget to put this top plate back on like i did it just snaps on snap there snap there snap there and there and you'll notice it's only goes one way because the cable has to fit and the drive motor has to fit.